the one and only God. And he told Moses, I am that I am. Whatever you need, I am. That's who he is. God is, I am. So when the Lord passed over Egypt, the Israelites were saved by the blood. There's something about the blood. The Egypt were, they lost their firstborn child, but Israel was saved by the blood. There is something about the blood. God's children had to put a mark on their houses. Now, now catch me now. With the blood of a lamb. I didn't say the lamb. They had to mark their doorposts with the blood of a lamb. This was the blood of the Passover lamb. The blood would keep God's people safe. Am I right about it? They would be safe when the death angel passed through Egypt. They were not saved now because they were the seed of Abraham. Let me say it again. They were not saved because they were the seed of Abraham. They were not saved because of their goodness. I got some news for you. God didn't save you because your mama and daddy was saved. God didn't save you because you go to church and, and you were baptized. You were saved by the blood of Jesus. The Lord said, now the blood shall be a sign for you. On your houses, so I know where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I won't harm you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, let me tell you what God was looking for. God was looking for the blood. Am I right about it? But let me slow down a little bit. There is a plague here now in 2020. It is called the coronavirus. This is what they call a pandemic. That means that the plague is all over the world. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live. You can live in North Carolina, South Carolina, New York, California, and Florida. The coronavirus will still come into your city. It will come into your house. Rich man, poor man, the coronavirus will come knocking on your door. The Israelites have to go into their homes and stay right there. They had to sprinkle the blood of a lamb upon their houses. This was then and this is now. They told us, the governor told us, to stay in our homes. And you better stay there. Come out, good God Almighty, when you have to come out, come out to get food, come out to get your medicine, come out, but he said, stay in the house and be safe. You know what I'm talking about. And wait, we got to wait until God move this virus. But wait a minute, what will it take to save us from this coronavirus? Let me tell you, it's going to take the Lamb of God. It's going to take the blood of Jesus. His blood has not been sprinkled on our houses. His blood has not been sprinkled on my door. But upon our hearts, His blood has been sprinkled upon our hearts, upon our lives. you got to plead the blood of Jesus upon your house, upon your life. When you walk out of your house, plead 
the blood of Jesus on your journey. When you come home again, plead the blood of Jesus upon your house, upon your children, upon your family. But most of all, plead the blood upon this world. God is a mighty good God. God can do what he wants to and nobody can stop it. Well, I got a question for you. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make this old world whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can destroy this coronavirus and make it go away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of my Jesus. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. If it had not been for your grace and mercy, I wouldn't be here right now. If it had not been for your grace and mercy, we all would fall to the coronavirus. God's grace and God's mercy. Well, there is no vaccine. There is no shot. There is no cure for the coronavirus. Could have fought a coronavirus. But we got something. We got the blood of Jesus. Jesus! Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood that signed my name. Jesus! The blood of Jesus is the only thing that will save us and wash away this coronavirus. Pray for yourself. Pray for the world. God expects us to fall on our knees. If my people put a call by my name, would humble themselves and pray, you know, and, and come off the high horses, get on their knees, get on our knees, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the Long Branch First Baptist Church family, for all the church families. Lord, there may be somebody listening that don't even go to church. Father, touch them too in the name of Jesus. But we're praying for, for North Carolina, for the whole United States. We're praying for Shelby and everybody else. We're praying for the whole world. Doesn't matter, Lord, where they live, the coronavirus will find us Bless our homes. Touch us, Lord. We need you like we never needed you before. Bless us, Lord. Heal. Miracle worker. Heal. The great I am. Heal. The great physician. Heal. Touch the hospitals. The doctors, the nurses. All those emergency workers. Lord, touch our officials. Show them, Lord, what they ought to do. Show us, Lord, what we ought to do. Keep us in your care. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now before I go, Long Branch, a note to you. Uh, Saturday, the 4th, we did have a graveside service for Sister Hester Houston. So we don't want to invite nobody because you know how the restrictions are. So please pray for Michael and the Hester Houston family. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I love you. Can't wait to see you. God bless you. Amen.